Hi, so this is a quick demo or tutorial of Portainer, which is a containerization management tool that allows you to easily deploy, configure, and secure containers in minutes. It's kind of like Kubernetes. Um, it uses Swarm. It can use Kubernetes or uh, Kubernetes, whichever. Um, uh, and it can easily deploy data centers, application, and multiple, you know, dockerized or containerized application with ease. Um, Additionally, we are going to show how we can easily secure um, the you know Docker web application with a domain, get a free SSL certificate, as well as um, either expose certain services or you know maintain um, certain services within uh, um, the Docker network so they can only communicate um, inside of the Docker network. And then lastly, we are going to look on uptime Kuma, which is used to, you know, monitor the services that you have, different websites and so forth. So starting with uh, um, Portainer. So I'm going to use Digital Ocean to set up a uh, server so um, give me a moment so normally you can literally go on uh, digital ocean market space click on the docker container right here um well basic i'm going to just um keep it to maintenance because you know um it's a quick demo i'm doing um yeah that's fine um I normally have my SSH key right here. You add your SSH key and then you just enable backup and so forth. Give me a moment. You can enable backup, enable monitor, monitoring, and I'm just going to call this test, test server one, um, test server one, and then I'll click on create job quit. So it will create the job quit. Um, once the job quit is finished um, creating, you can literally um, come, right, come right here. So I'm going to use a uh, VS Code server to easily connect to this um, once the IP address is um, ready. So give, give us a moment waiting so forth so, let's check if that's finished um okay so it's finished so at this point you i i can literally just come right here and then um ssh um, just ssh uh, in the server i'm going to use vs code right here by simply um i have vs code open i'm using this extension called remote explorer so i'll click on that type root put the um put the thing there choose that config now um i will open uh, connect to the os it's a linux server yes continue with that fingerprint and of course i'm just going to open okay so i'm connected to Okay, great. So I'm connected to the server to VS Code. So um, let me just do, do this. Yeah, I'm I'm good with that. So we're just going to use the root folder um, as the default. Um, I'm going to create a folder called Container. Um, inside of the Portainer folder, I kind of already have a um, Portainer configuration already. Um, hold on, let me find uh, this, these two files, which I'm going to just drop inside of the Portainer folder, and I'll walk you through it. So um, I have this port run that does a Docker start deploy and so forth. I also have this Docker um, stack um, deploy file that, you know, it has like the protein uh, agent um, that is pretty much does uh, like a master slave 
um, connection for Fortina. Well, it's like a master agent then, um, because you know, <laughs> um, colonial time. So in any in case, um, so this is the agent. Um, it's using the Docker socket, um, mapping to the Docker volume using the agent network and so forth. And as you can see, it's in the operating systems OS. This is the fourth trainer. I normally um, don't recommend having these um, public. So um, you, if you want to access fourth trainer through the IP address, you, you read that. But normally, I will just comment it out. Um, of course, I will just remove that um if you want to have that mounted but we don't need to mount anything and then this is the nginx proxy server that will help um us to um you know securely manage and expose our application to the public um if we want and then this this is maria db which is pretty much like my scroll um, these are like default stuff that I'll leave them be. Um, and of course, you see that I define a port um, proxy network, which all of these um, application is running on and, and so forth. So I'll go ahead and just save this. Then I'll do con uh, control G, which will bring up the shell. Um, and I just CD into container. And then I can say bash um, port and then, okay. So um, with, uh, with Portina, it uses Swarm by default, but it, like I said, can use um, Kubernetes. So I'll need to get the IP address and then um, if config.me. So that's the IP address of my server. And then I'll say Docker Swarm in it and then i need to i think it's called advertise addr and i'll put the ip address okay so great um so we advertise the ip address um and it um did a swarm in it so now we can run our container and as you can see, it's spinning up. And like I said, this is a fresh um, um, digital ocean server. So when we do Docker PS, okay, nothing is running, but so, um, Docker, okay, sorry, typo. So we're just waiting on it to start up. So let me run this again, so it's updating the server. So now we just need to wait. But let's go to um, the IP address that we had. So once um, Portina is up and running, um, what will happen is it will show up. The Nginx proxy server will show up. Um, and I guess it's still um, deploying. Okay, so um, Docker PS, you see the um, containers, some of them still just got created. And then notice, bam, we got uh, Nginx, the Nginx thing. So based on Nginx um, documentation, we pretty much, uh, you know, have this, but we have it integrated with um, Portainer based on um, so forth. But we need to go to port, because port 80 is the like, public web, but we can go to the back end, like um, go to port 81. So when you go to port 81, prompt us for user email, the email and password. Um, by default, the email is admin, and the password is change me admin example.com and once you log in it will prompt you to change the info so i'll put my name put um just a quick alias and i'll put my a dummy email and it will ask me to change my password So 
Okay, so to it. So um I did that and I did that so old. So um in code for you, um I pretty much um just put like point it to a wildcard um to steady demo um to the the server. So you notice that um, the IP address for the server, and again, this is just for a demo. So if I go to this now, um, hold on, let me see. So if I go to this now, and let's say, remember, if we had gone to port 80, it will give us that. So if I put like example that like anything literally anything in front of a steady demo dot jamaicans.dev it should give us okay it should give us this but because we there's an ssl certificate needed let's say for example um let's add add it so right here you would add a like your proxies, the domains that you want Nginx proxy to manage. So let's say, for example, uh, this domain you want to be on the port 80. So I'll click that. Let's actually put the IP address. indicate that it's port 80. Let's say WebSocket. We can allow WebSocket, we can block common exploits. And then right here, we can just generate a free SSL certificate using Let's Encrypt. Um, we can enable HSTS, which will give us additional um, you know, security. Well, on transfer, we can enable HTTP2. Um, there's a bunch of stuff, and we can also do DNS challenge for additional security. Um, there's, we can add also add Nginx configuration. So let's just click save. So this will create. Whoa, there's an internal error. I think I know what the internal error is. But let's just refresh. So it it the let encrypt um worked. The reason why it wasn't working is because I was putting um an email address, an invalid email address, for showing that at example.com. So you will need to put the real address. So, when I, so once you can, for example, you can put money that um whatever to, like I said, I point um my domain my IP address for here. So once I put like any anything in front of dot um steady demo dot jamicans that um uh, if it will auto resolve the ear. So for example, if I come right and say this is mgm demo dot steady um demo dot jamicans dot dev um, and let's say I put the IP address, this port 81, indicate that it's public. Um, the SSL, I would have to put my actual address, click save, and it will, you know, create a free SSL certificate for, um, free SSL certificate for that um subdomain or domain um so for example if i click on this now it will provide that so that's pretty much the first um step of um nginx proxy manager and remember earlier in vs code server we add uh, we add pretty much blocked out and say that we don't want protein to run on port 90. So um, if we don't want port it to, to run on port 9000, sorry. Um, like for example, if I do Docker 
comport we know that notice that this is called Poetina Poetina. So um, if we want to access Poetina now, uh, we can do something like Poetina dot steady demo dot um, Jamaicans dot dev. Poetina Poetina put 9000. Um, Input SSL, force it, agree. And then when I click save, um, I should be able to access um, Poetina um, using that um, domain. And of course, you can put your own domain, as I mentioned before. So when I click on this, fingers crossed, bam, Poetina is up and running. Um, a web dot uh, portina. Okay, so I will need to restart portina. So, um, in the next video, I'll show you how to use portina. Hey, we've reached the end of this video, and I just have to say thank you so much for watching. I know these videos can get pretty long, but I do hope it was informative, fun, and insightful. If you like this video, don't forget to click subscribe and hit the notifications bell in the description below. Once again, thank you for watching. See you in the next video and blessings from the Jamaican Developers team.